I dedicate this video to my good friend, Sheik, a.k.a. Chiron, and Andrew, because it's now been two years since we made our own podcast called the Shonen Learning Podcast, where we did together. And I want to thank them, thank these guys so much about uh, this is how I started the podcast. Do you guys have any congratulation messages before any of this? You guys have? Hey, man, look, you know, doing doing social media and performance and having the gift of gab, that is a, uh, a special thing. Many people have tried. Many people have failed. Uh, so if you're succeeding at it and it sounds like you are, that's phenomenal. So uh, just you. keep up the good work. And I uh, can't wait to hear what you got in store for the future. Yeah. What about you, Mr. Uh, Kunato Sugu? My new friend. Yeah, do you uh, you want to know why Cartoon Network and G4 is failing? It's because the stuff that we're doing right here, this is the reason, this is the future, this is what, what's going to become the future of television and entertainment, pretty much. Talking fun with Edo. Welcome to the show. Hello, everyone. It's Podcast Edo, back at it again with another video. And for today's episode, it's going to be no comics. But not only just that, it's going to be the Q&A session along with the international channel for the very first time. And also, you know... Thank this second late anniversary of our Lonely Shonen podcast, as you guys saw from the beginning. And as usual, you know, let's move on to the interview with this sound once again of the warning sound. Because you already know what it is during the spooky season. So now let's officially start with the interview. Hello, everyone. It's Edo Ford, and I'm back with another podcast episode with my guest, Noel Comic, and the hey, very hey. first time, international channel known as Edward. Hello! Hi. Nice to be okay. here. And also, this is your very first time we're getting to see him in person. Definitely. Yep. Um. So, are you guys really uh, big into Minecraft at any chance? Minecraft, uh, no, sorry. Well, my <laughs> son is big into it. I am not. I'm not opposed to it. I like it. I've used it to teach. Um, cause I'm a social studies teacher when I'm not making fun YouTube videos about the international channel and various forms of Why? nonsense. Um, so I like Minecraft. I just don't play a lot of it. Uh, but my son has it on the Switch, and it's the Mario version, so it's super cool. It plays like the N64 music all the time. Gotcha. So the reason why I mention it is because, so there's a, unfortunately, in unfortunate news, there was like a big YouTuber named, uh, oh, oh, now I remember, okay, Technoblade, he unfortunately passed away from cancer, and he was like really big into the Minecraft and YouTube community, so one of his best friends was named Dream, and he uh, officially did a face reveal, that's why I mentioned it, but Unfortunately, he got backlash because it was like they were calling him ugly, and I was like looking at it, and as it's being shown, it's like that's not ugly. What are y'all talking about? It, international channel looks like, and this is a high, high compliment. Could be on uh, Generation X dramatic comedy money. All right, you know, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, be Thank you. Vita, you know, like right, yeah, you know, right with the, the rest of the cast right there. So. Uh, very, and, very good, very good. Are you still so, you know? Oh, huh? Yeah, I, I already told you. I told I told you that back a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. I forgot, <laughs> and then and then I looked at you, and I'm like, oh, you look Filipino. One more thing I'm gonna add for the Minecraft thing is I saw a meme where um basically uh you know it's they're in Germany and uh the son wanted Minecraft and the grandfather actually gave uh the son Minecraft. Um, and then the, the, the father was saying, he asked for Minecraft. <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? I, 
I honestly was like, I was like the worst Minecraft mod ever. <laughs> <laughs> like all like, what is this? This is not what I asked for at it's all. Like the angry rantings of a failed painter. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah. All right. Now, I, I, you know, okay. in, in full objectivity, and Hitler's the worst person ever. But he, I didn't mind his paintings. I thought they were kind of interesting. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I like his paintings. They had kind of like a, I don't know. It, it looked, they, they look kind of comic booky, and I mean that in a good way. Right. You know, so. I know. I also kept thinking that all the time. It's just like, dang. <laughs> If only if the art world could have accepted them. I saw a really funny meme about that. And it was uh, like painting before 1933 and it was all like realistic. And then it was like painting after 1950 and it's all abstract. And the last yeah. part of the meme is like, okay, now everyone can get into art school. <laughs> so like, no one gets like mad and goes psycho anymore. So, you know. Right, right. So back, okay, now... We have our questions from uh, my subscribers along with uh, my shared subscriber from my very first guest, the AP18. And the first question we have is from Fritz the Frog. And uh, it has asked us, do you guys have any pets? And if so, what type of pets do you both have? Uh, okay. Well you, yeah, you go first. Uh, uh, me, okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I have pets. I have these all these stray cat pets. They're like all stray cats. I didn't get them like by myself. They just like one day. It was like started like in a rainy day, 2007. There was like an old uh, mother cat it was just hanging around. And then all of a sudden she just started to give birth. And from their point on, uh, we just got all these cats. And now they're like hanging around being freeloaders and uh they're you know they're really awesome right now so yeah i have cats you know it's like four of them right now and uh we're you know we're just trying to do our best to take care of them right now hmm. how about you mr noel uh well i do not have any pets however uh on the topic of cats uh when i went to uh suny binghamton uh for my um for my graduate school uh, I lived in a house with a 30 pound cat and her daughter. And uh, oh. I was very close to those cats. Uh, and then when I moved, it felt really bad because like I would live in Binghamton like five days a week and come back to Cortland on the weekends. So I spent, I'd spent like, you know, three years with these cats. They were functionally my pets. And, right. you know, like when I kind of finally figured out the dating scene, you know, one of the cats was like pretty attached to me, so she was like very mean to any girl I brought back home. So it was, it was just, you know. uh, the, the cat, the, the cat kicked you out. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the cat was like mean to the girl. Like it was, yeah, it's not, not not good. So, um, uh, is it the same person you have now as your wife, or is it a different? Yeah, one? her and another girl that I, I, I mean, <laughs> she was pretty. She was jelly. Only no, I no, could have just, like. I was a very late bloomer to the dating thing, but once I did, it worked out well. But like, oh. I'm just saying, like, so like, I my last year in Binghamton, you know, like if I ever brought someone back to the to the apartment, it was like right. my precious was not happy about it. And Mocha, the That's fat the one, Mo Mocha was like legit, like morbidly obese. I mean, it was like the Bart Simpson that washed himself with a rag on a stick. Oh, but, yeah. Cat. She was adorable. <laughs> I mean, like, she was really, really fat. Like, this is, like, uh, kind of like a bummer, but, like, the neighbor died one time, and I and the, the neighbor died when I was at class, and I came back oh. to class, and, um, like, uh, the, the cop thought that my landlady domesticated a raccoon. Like, he didn't think it was actually a cat. Oh. And explain, <laughs> explain this is actually yeah. a cat. That just was very fat, like, but to, uh, to um, I see's point over here, um, like, it was a foundling, and once she realized she got it good, she never, she knew never to wander out of the house, and just realized, she just chilled and got fat and relaxed, you know, <laughs> that, was, that was the rest of her life, so. Right, uh, for my story, like I mentioned from my Mini Money video, Link below with a lot of other things. Uh, I previously had a dog named Mika. One fact enough, it was like resonating of uh, a person that was also both mixed. So 
that I've had a dog, and uh, of course we've had, like I said, had a bunny, and we're just gonna leave it there. And so now our next question comes from uh, Kids to Production, and they have asked, um, is there new, any new video coming up for both of your channels? For you guys, is there any new video coming up soon? Yeah, well, for me, it's like, um, I am running out of like IC stuff, but I'm going to try my best to upload more IC stuff. I actually have like the, one of the interesting things I have, I actually have like the last episode of Dragon Ball GT on the Cartoon Network broadcast and also one from the international channel. But of course, you know how YouTube is with their copyright regimes and all that stuff. I don't think I can upload them, but for the time being, I'm going to try to upload at least some commercials and maybe some documentaries. So check out on that for later on. That's it's awesome. Fine. Well, um, you know, what I normally do for content is I like to try to do various video game reviews. Santino oh, Santino's here. What the heck? <laughs> Santino's here. Hello. Well, I definitely, it's interesting. You talked about like future projects or things like that. So Santino and I, you know, in addition to, you know, like there were, you know, every, like I'll try to do like a review or two every, you know, week or so for just games that I like. But what's really cool is that, you know, since I like to live stream, now that Santino's getting a little older, uh, he's hopping in on the live streams when uh, he's awake, and we're starting to do more video game reviews together. Uh, So we're starting to get to do some uh, father-son collaborations, which which is a lot of fun. Uh, Oh, my God. Yeah, and he's great, you know. I haven't seen the videos, but, my God, it looks so beautiful, man. It's just like the best. Father and son bonding like I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, he's he's the best. And we've got a little sister uh, as well. And actually, you talked about Minecraft. Santino, uh, you know, was, I, I let him kind of lead the, the uh, review um, for the, the Mario Minecraft creative mode. I hit that. I hit that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very good. Very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, his sister actually hopped in, too. Um, on the on the international channel stuff since uh, wait, 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 not where we on the channels. Yeah, no, I, I am. It's right there. Um, so on the topic of international channel stuff, um, you know, I now I'm in the throes of the school year, and mm-hmm. I for all the cool stuff I have in my game room, have the shittiest laptop that's ever existed. It's literally in five <laughs> pieces and held together with duct tape, and. Um, you know, I every so often when I get some downtime, I just pull out the stacks of tapes and try to rip off the capture card and rip it to the capture yeah. card. So, you know, just if I just get some downtime, I'll just like thumb through the tapes on the live streams that, you know, uh, International Channel stops by and, you know, you've stopped oh. by here and there. Um, you usually like the last hour or so, we're just going through random old tapes and just chatting right. about them and laughing about stuff. You know, we actually watched uh in bits and pieces like we just finished watching dragon ball the magic begins um mm. you know which was the 1992 uh taiwanese live action dragon ball movie that was on the international oh, channel. oh yeah um, that was a good line yeah it sounds <laughs> great so you know just uh, you know and every once in a while if i'm if i'm feeling particularly inspired mommy blocked mommy blocked the baby Maybe that's okay. That way she won't climb up the stairs. Yeah, that's... Rumble butterball. Uh-huh. Uh, like... I was just going to get something that I can sit in. Oh, sure. Yeah, hang on, man. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, dude. So, like, um, uh, just if I find some time, I'll upload a tape. Okay. If I, you know, I've, I've also been, uh, you know, uploading, you know, some wrestling reviews or things like that. If I'm feeling particularly ranty about something that's happening in AEW or back in the day with WCW. So, yeah, exactly. yeah that was a long answer to a short question. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. And, and, of, and of you guys have, like, a mic in front of like, you in the middle. Like, Adam's a pro. He's got a mic. Like, <laughs> well, what's going on? Like, one of my favorite YouTubers has a mic. Nice, yes. And it's the frustrated gamer. Brandon, the frustrated gamer. Yeah, I have like this old headset. Every day. I'm really cheap. Hold on a second. I got nothing. I just have a microphone. That's all I got, man. So, 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 so Brandon, does a, does a normal video every day and does a rush game every day. Sorry about that. It's okay. Life interrupted. 
It's all good. What happened just now? <laughs> no, it's like my, my mom came in, asked me uh, what she wants to buy for. I think we're probably going to get McDonald's again, but I might have better okay. ask about that trick and treat stuff that Noel mentioned in his last live stream or something. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's actually one of the questions we are about to go into. Right the old right one, but it's the job done. Shit. Does not have the, the plastic top, which is kind of a ripoff, <laughs> but it will definitely mean yeah, it's so about trick or treating. And, yeah. yeah. I, I legit got this last night. So, <laughs> yeah. Guys, like, someone was just telling me about this. And this is Santino. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. The, yeah, the, the, the classic. That's this the classic. is his personal one. This is Santino. <laughs> this is the one that you get off McDonald's right here. Oh, so. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Did you yeah, know that there's other little people now? Yeah. <laughs> nice. You do that. We'll keep oh, this one. Oh, God. Thing. They just have four yeah, eyes. Yeah, we'll like, that's not. Hey, Bell, what are you guys doing? Yeah. But um, okay. Speaking of Halloween, that is actually funny because uh, that was one of our next questions from uh, Lena Chan and ADP was uh was uh. So, uh I'm find something that's a little taller. Santino, you can't you can't talk when he's asking the question. Okay. All right, that's okay. <laughs> so um, uh, Lena Chan and ADP asked, "Is Noel going to do anything if, uh, like join a Halloween party in New York?" And uh, if International Channel for Life is going to do anything in uh doing this time and all. Uh, for myself, I'm probably just going to be working because since I work at a theme park and it's everything's Halloween themed, so that's probably like the closest thing to it. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> Um, I'm not really the biggest Halloween person. It's like it's been like a long time. You know, the older you get, the less meaning yeah. and impact it has. But you know, I don't criticize those who still want to like do it. You know, so that's my question on my end. I mean, my answer on my end. By the way, like before, uh, is it? Can you just say what park you're working at, or is that like? Yeah, it's a it's a Great America it's Cedar Fair. Uh, unfortunately, okay. it's going to close like within eleven years for some reason. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much like that's the theme park I'm working at. Gotcha. How about you, Noah? Are you going out on Halloween or anything like that this year? In New well, York? you know, um, you know, I do. I live in New York State, uh, which is kind of distinct from New York City. Uh, so I feel like a lot of time when I say like, hey, I live in New York, some people who are abroad think I'm cooler than I actually am because uh, uh, I live in the part of New York with a lot of squirrels and not a lot right. of people, uh, <sighs> which I actually prefer because I, I like I, I like where I live. It's got a nice spectrum of opinion and and uh, just the people of various backgrounds. It's it's kind of fun. Um, that said, uh, I'm going to take my kids trick or treating um around the my where my mom lives uh there is, it's a very uh well populated trick or treating spot so they'll see grandma and grandpa and get some trick or treating yeah. done and uh then i am a teacher so i am going to uh dress up as something for school i'm thinking probably luigi from super mario <laughs> Um, oh yeah, that movie coming out. Uh, if I'm oh, feeling froggy, I, I like the I like the five o'clock shadow. But if I wanted to go for the more authentic look, I could just grow the mustache and ruin my look. But I don't know if I want to <laughs> do that or not. You guys, you guys excited for the new movie for Mario coming out? Yeah, very. I am. I didn't I, even I, know. I, I didn't even know there was a new movie coming out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's like uh, the only thing like people were really upset was like Charles Monet could like he's in it, but it's like he wasn't really the main guy. You know, that was a big thing. I, I but did. honestly, if we could talk about the other movie, then I'm like, well, you know what? This is actually a big step up. You know, I big step I, up from the '90s. So I have that on DVD, and I've never watched it. Like I remember the commercial <laughs> for it. <laughs> I love the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. That's like one of my all-time favorite right, things. Right, 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 right. Um, but I never saw the one with um, Ed Haskins. And yeah. I, I saw the first Sonic the Hedgehog CG movie, and that was phenomenal. I did not see the second yeah. one. And Santino and I were just watching a, a trailer for the Mario movie, and it looked nice. So I'm pretty... Right, yeah. We're, we're, we're going to go see it. The voice was kind of screwed right. up. You thought the voice was screwed up? I, I didn't actually... I, so the, let me put it this way. The trailer I saw did not have Chris Pratt talking, so I don't know. So he's seen probably more than I have. So, 
Yeah. Okay. Um, this we have question Super Mario from... wants Super Mario. Right on, right. Okay, so if Edo's talking, you can't talk, okay? Because he's doing the interview, all right? All right. <laughs> okay. So the next one comes from the Thai train, and this person has asked no comics specifically does uh do you stream every other day or every other week? I try to stream at least once a week. Um, usually on Fridays or Saturdays, every once in a while. Um, I'll stream on an, a weekday if there's, I'm a public school teacher. So, um, you know, five days a week, Monday to Friday, I'm usually doing school stuff. But if there is a day off of school and I'm particularly well rested when the family goes to sleep, I like to stream. Also, uh, during the week and days, if Santino's got nothing going on and he asks me, um, sometimes we've been doing a couple day streams. Uh, so that's been kind of fun. But usually if my streams happen, Friday and Saturday nights, uh, starting, you know, between 1030 and 11 o'clock and, uh, then right. go to like two in the morning. Right. I feel you. Um, so you guys basically have answered the question from Daisy Dino. So our next question comes from James Gilbert, uh, for international channel. It's for, it's for inter international channel was, uh, how, when did you create the YouTube channel and what was the first video that you ever uploaded on your channel? Hmm, it's been a while now. So it's like been like almost a year, like since the start of 2020, since I started the IC uh, internet channel for live channel. And right. it was like, you know, as you know, responding to like basically Noel and stuff. So it's kind of hard. I got, I got, I used to like forgot how, what, like what video I actually, like that was actually the first video, but I would say it was either like the KTEH uh, video or the PBS video of like the Tinti Muyo closing, or either it's yeah, probably yeah. either the, the sting, the, the vid, that sting commercial from like 1996 on TNT, uh, which is one of my most popular videos it's probably either one of those but sometimes uh when the stuff that i uploaded sometimes i wouldn't be satisfied with the quality and i would just like try to re-upload them uh, from time to time just to re-insure their quality so it's probably either, yeah it's yeah it's either one of those videos hmm. so uh next comes from my very first interview that i ever had of all time named the aim 18 and he has asked both of you guys and also, for your son, if he would like to join in, uh, what is your favorite television show? Just of any kind, like, what's your favorite television show? Yeah, for myself, uh, there's a really lot to talk, you know, about. But, you know, I guess uh, from right off the bat, started from off the cuff, I would say, like, Dragon Ball Z. It's, like, basic. It's generic. But at least that's, like, the only one show, the only one anime that I could watch, like, every single version, no matter how bad, from every single country. Right. No, every single remix, I could watch it, and, and the story will just be so okay. Like, you could, like, rape it. You could, like, de brutalize it as much as you want. It would still look good. Like, no matter what, you cannot, like, destroy this this show. And th now, that's the... Um, yeah. One, sorry, one question for that. <laughs> Is for the Dragon Ball Z, are you talking about the OG Japanese version or yeah. the English version? Yeah, words? yeah, I like the, oh, I am like really nostalgic for like the really English, or that's like even the really English bad, the really, the one where <laughs> the one where Tien says, uh, where like they blew up the car, the, the well, they said a cargo road, but there was people in there, and then Tien said, oh, I see their parachutes, they're okay. <laughs> I, I'm really nostalgic for that, um, version but you know even multiple versions like uh, i really like have a fondness for them so like yeah when you say drag like extra version i guess you could probably say like, like all versions and stuff like that yeah especially the <laughs> yeah we watched it and uh in the filipino version as well have you watched oh, yeah. it yeah so you so you've done it all all right <laughs> now to noel and also for your son if you would like to join in what is you guys favorite television show Oof, that's a really tricky question. I also would say that Dragon Ball Z is my favorite anime, and uh, that is the show that got me into Japanese anime, because even before I got, would even watch the episodes, when I got International Channel and I watched the opening credits of uh, Kinorobi Kagayama's Head Chala, 
I would just like, I knew every Saturday at 7.30 to turn on Channel 75 because I could watch the yep. opening credits of Dragon Ball Z. And whether or not I was going to sit through the whole episode or not, because I didn't quite get the whole awesomeness of anime yet. Um, I, I wanted to see that opening because it really caught my attention. And um, from there, I, this was a you know, rabbit hole that got me into loving anime. Um, I'm also, yeah, uh, what, you want to go? Um, probably Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Dragon Ball Super Superhero. We see a lot of movies Wait, twice well, in the theaters. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. the best one. That's a phenomenal movie. Gotcha. And, and, it, and it highlights my favorite character, Gohan, who is confirmed mm. as the strongest non-fused Dragon Ball Z character and super character. Is, is, it is, it's true. That's what it and is. Even yeah. oh. Piccolo. And or Piccolo is orange now, your favorite. Piccolo, color. yes. Oh, yeah. His favorite uh, color is orange. Um, so. or he likes orange. Definitely, uh, for me, it's literally the show based on my name. And um, we'll, be get, we'll be touching into the show where it was made later on. Uh, Ed and Nettie, this was like one of my very favorite shows, and I believe, I think probably second show, because I believe my very first was Hamtaro, which 20 years ago, and I remember one of your videos, which will be in the link to, below, talked about the Asian Invasion, and that was 20 years ago, and that's my, when I caught it, and it was that, and another thing that was definitely that, I'm not sure if you guys heard of it, it was a PBS show called Sawa about the Chinese cat and it was uh made by the person who made uh the Joy Luck Club, the movie and book. Hmm. I've heard of that movie but I never seen that show before. Me neither. Yeah, it's the same it was interesting. I was like, wow she made this and that was pretty much my first uh I guess my first appearance of Asia. More likely like of, of course the video I've done earlier this year, Coco Lee. So now our, let me see here. Yeah, okay. Now our second to last question that we have is uh, from the Splash Down Dolphin. And uh, it has asked us uh, what type of video game that Noel Comic played? And um, where is, not location, but like what state does International Channel for Life live in? Okay. California, uh, the worst state in the world right now. <laughs> so, right now, what's going on? Oh, oh, oh God, God, haven't you heard? Have you been living under a rock? <laughs> and like the last but, thing I heard, unfortunately, was just the homeless situation, but that's about yep, it, you know. Yep. Too I many lists. Way worse than I thought, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Besides homelessness, you know. <laughs> yeah, so I probably have been living under a rock. But, oh, you can also join in this question too. Like, what would be your favorite type of video game you like to play? Uh, well, re genre wise, it probably would be like fighting games. Right now, the la the latest uh, I actually played was like Dead or Alive Six, you know, which has a bad right. DLC racket, and you know, of course, like you know, some RPGs. I'm trying. I'm still trying to wait until the they actually get the latest installment of the FF Seven remake. Which I don't know if they're going right. to actually release that yet, but you know, those are the type of games that I'm playing right now. All right, all right. How about you, Noel? What is your uh, favorite? What what is uh, what's your uh, what's your what's your favorite type of game? And also, <clears> well, your son could go into. Yeah, yeah. So my favorite type of game, I have a uh a, a pretty broad spectrum of games that i like uh it's more uh, of the retro the stuff that was popular and like what we, i guess would be considered like the retro times like 80s right. and 90s um yeah. so like international channel for life uh if i'm looking to just kind of like do a pick up and play and relax it's a fighting game um those are the types of games that i find really really enjoyable street fighter king of fighters tekken uh random neo geo fighters um, things of the, things like that, Virtua Fighter. Um, so I, I love those types of games, uh, particularly of Japanese origin, because they do a great job with the music and the character design and just the general aesthetic and combination of things. I'm a huge Sonic the Hedgehog fan. Sonic the Hedgehog's like my favorite video game character. Um, so yes. I love the 2D Sonics. Um, you know, Sega CD, Mega CD, Sega Genesis. Um, yeah. I like Sega Sonic. Saturn. I, I like Sonic 3D Blast. I, I think that mm. game is grossly underrated. It's not as oh. good as the 2D Sonics because, like, those games have to do such a great job of, like, combining music 
character design, mm. energy, yeah. flow, like kind of reaction, like twitch reaction kind of times, um, mm. timing. Uh, so, I mean, I like Mario too, but I think Sonic is a much more like evocative yeah. and artistic experience. Um, okay. I love I love my Famicom, so I like 80s oh, anime oh, games. Oh, Famicom. Famicom. Mm -hmm. Dragon Quest, um, <laughs> Mighty Final Fight, Donkey Kong 3, Mario 3, Final Fantasy 3, you know, I'll just uh, any anime game I can find on the Famicom, I buy. Um, and um, I uh, this is, I've got so many I can't I'm having a hard time even like narrowing it all down. Um, oh. uh, for modern stuff, um, Santino told me to download Fortnite, and I've been having some fun okay. messing around with that. Uh, and right. my, my my students uh, think it's fun that I play that. I'm not good at it. Um, I've Have you got that now. skin yet? <laughs> I've never won a battle royal. I made it the top two the last time, and I want this okay. anime skin. Whoa, and I'm right. so naive. Like I to me, like the whole like racket of like downloading <laughs> skins and stuff. I, I yeah. like I'm so used to just buying a game and having it being complete that it's like yeah. someone's like, we'll just buy the skin at thirty dollars. Like, no, I'm not spending thirty dollars on an anime skin. I spent thirty dollars on this hat, you know, but <laughs> so, you like, only spent dollars so. on half of a hat. Like if you wore a visor, <laughs> like George Carlin, it's like Finish the rest of the hat. Yeah, no, it's like, yeah, no, no, we're not doing that. So, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, Samurai Pizza Cats on the Famicom. Was oh, the that the other day with Santino. Oh, that's yes. a phenomenal oh, game. Oh, that was so good. Oh, man, I miss that show so much. <laughs> the, 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 the game is really good. The game is like straight <laughs> up one of the most accessible NES Famicom games. It's got big, bold sprites, it's easy, right. it's fun. It's 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 got a password system. I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite games on the Nintendo Famicom. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, uh, it's funny uh, that when they made it's this clip in English, they literally were just like, "Yeah, we're gonna guess. We're not even gonna go by the." I've heard that the whole thing. And I've um, heard that. Uh, did you like the Dreamcast as well? I remember. Oh, I love it. Uh, Dream I love Dreamcast. Um. So I have a uh, VGA Trinitron monitor, and I, I have my Dreamcast hooked up to that. That thing is like phenomenal looking on that thing. Um, it, it's 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 like better than 4K. Um, my Ooh. favorite Dreamcast games are uh, Street Fighter Alpha Three, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, Dead or Alive Two. Um, I love Sonic Adventure. That's a cool game, but I haven't like mastered it or anything like that. Shenmue, I love that game on the Dreamcast. Um, you know, Street Fighter Three. I love those games. Um, I, I think those games were definitely ahead of their time. Um, they were beautifully drawn. Um, I really like the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure fighting game. That was, I mean, the other anime I was going to talk about is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure because <laughs> that and Dragon oh, Ball yeah. have the hugest influence on my art, along with like Jim Lee and Roy Lichtenstein. So, in Archie Comics, so I love JoJo's Bizarre right, right. Adventure. It's phenomenal. I got um, a lot to me. I got. You want to? I uh, want to talk about a couple of your favorite games. Two D Sonic, Three D Sonic, Mario, Two D Mario, or go fit anything that's either Sonic, Mario, or like any mm. or like anything else that's kind of like related to ten Nintendo or or play something that's like was on the switch and then like play it like we just beat sonic Mania and sonic Mania was on the um switch so that's why i just played it is because it was on the switch. we beat sonic Mania last night me and you're just hanging nice. out nice nice <laughs> nice it's it's nice to really see the gamer community of like father and son it's just yeah. and it all just he saved like, my butt he, man he's the next game of life he was tails he could like take the extra hit i could not hide in the oh, corner oh man he look out look out in the national man, so not not <laughs> at, not edwards i mean international of the whole world like, guys, look out okay. this guy <laughs> That is because since shows is play that's what we done. Because um uh, because even though you get hit once, the other time you can hit him and it's like enough time to hit him. The tails is invisible. It, it's kind of yeah. out of control a little bit since you have a flying system, but still though it kills his bullet again. Nice work, man. Right. For Edward, 
for for our last question for um for international channel for life we got two from uh blue white ghana mascots and uh paula and uh they have asked that uh do because you're called international channel for life do you speak other languages and um how did you come up with the name international channel for life uh I don't really speak any other languages for right now. Uh, I'm trying to learn Tagalog, which is like the native language of my, my native Philippines or like where my par parents were Philippines. But I think I yeah. kind of, for myself, I think I kind of know some, a little bit of Japanese since I've been listening to Japanese dialogue for like over 20 years. Oh. But you know, like when someone uh, would say, if I understand Japanese, I would tell them Wakari Masen, which means I don't understand. I don't understand, and, uh, yeah. yeah do you, and then so as for the international channel, I just like um I just uh actually started using that name at the spur of the moment because I was watching Noel chat uh Noel uh no comics live stream and then he right. he kind of noticed there was like one viewer and I think I was that one viewer who was like uh watching him and then I just said I may uh I'm gonna try to like start a YouTube channel and then try to interact with him. So, and I just, you know, out of random, just start international channel for life. Cause you know, for wow. life was like the saying of like the NWO, the best wrestling stable of all time. Yeah. yeah, for yeah, life. yeah. And then, you know, that's how, you know, the rest of uh, it goes. That's how it is. <laughs> okay. So let me just add something real quick yeah. to that because there have been times, cause I don't speak any Japanese at all, but I love Japanese right. stuff. And there've been times when I've like, emailed or a message international channel because he's got some elementary japanese and we yeah. like had to like figure out song titles and stuff like that because if i find like a commercial in japan and it's only got like the romanji or whatever on the bottom it's like i can't read any of yeah. it i usually rely on him to decipher enough of it to point me in the direction to figure some stuff out so um we uh just found like with his help um, I found like a Tomoko Aran song um, for uh, I think it was like Camellia Diamond, oh, yes. um, and it, it had like a, a great commercial, really pretty blonde girl, and there was this like broken down Greek statue, and like she was like had like the face next to her or her face, and it had this like really cool song, and uh, I was able to get like the whole song on my channel and do some fan art of it because of his translation skills. Oh. Yeah, but we can't find wow. the Game Boy song, and that's even in English. That is, that is, that is, I told, I've got a lead on that. I don't know how good it is, <laughs> but Mickey Yoshino, the guy who wow. did the music to Kenny Lauderdale's uh, Kentoshi anime that he was bitching about, complaining about, I should say. <laughs> um, like, I Instagrammed him because the, because if you guys don't know, like, I, one of my, I, I dabble in lost media. And mm -hmm. the song yes. that I can't find for the life of me, and I've looked up some obscure crap, okay? <laughs> and I mean crap <laughs> in a nice way, right? Is the original Japanese commercial to the Game Boy. Um, right. It's like inspired by Stand By Me, the movie. that was very popular in Japan, mm. apparently. Um, and it's got these boys, like these three kids. They're like probably like nine. I know exactly what you're old. talking about. Yeah, yeah. They're uh they're they're kind of hitchhiking in the Australian Badlands, whatever. And there's this beautiful song sung in English by a guy that sounds like Randy Newman or Michael Bolton. And it's like searching for good times. How can I forget you? And, it's like, and then it starts talking in like Japanese showing the features of the Game Boy. And then it like hits this chorus and it's like, I wander, we wander. And it's like, yeah. and, and it's like, it's really, really cool and interesting. And if you like even go to those videos, like everyone, because in Japanese commercials, they usually put the song title on there um, in the corner. Right, yeah. and, and they don't have that in that Game Boy commercial. So <laughs> the Kenny Lauderdale, you know, super famous anime, obscure uh, anime YouTuber, um, his most awesome. recent video, he, Guy, I love Kenny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was complaining about this boxing anime called Kentoshi, which I like every part that I've seen of that, by the way. Um, but there's a song in Kentoshi called He the Fighter. Um, and like the singer sounds a lot like the guy in the Game Boy commercial. So I messaged him on Instagram oh. and I said, Is it you that sang the Game Boy commercial? And he hearted the comment. I don't know what that means. Uh, I'm just, like, 
Because I said, I know you sung He the Fighter, and I like that song a lot, which you can't, I can't find a complete version of that song on, on anywhere. But the, the bits of it that I've seen of it, I like. And I said, did you also sing this Game Boy song? Because it sounds a lot like it. And he just hearted the comment. And that's all that I know. So that that's my biggest I'm thing. going to say yes. I'm just going to go ahead and be like, yes, I'm the guy. And, and I would just say if he's going to like it to that point, And I would, I mean, honestly, I guess maybe if it helps, maybe. Like, I'll help you to even translate that. That I'll, Wait, did you put it in English or in Japanese? I put it in English. And no, okay. If if you probably need more help on that, I'll I'll help you like translate it so it could be like, listen, I understand that I got a heart. I just need to know if uh if you're the guy, but I'm going to believe yes if he's gonna be like, yeah, I, I hearted it. So now maybe. we have gotten into the Q and A session of our story. Now we're going to learn a little bit more about Noel's comment and uh. Our friend Edward from International Channel. So can you, so Noel, can you believe it's been a year since we have done like this video? Can you believe it? No. It's been no. exactly a year. Like, do you have like a favorite part from your unit? You know, now, I remember definitely, and that's going to, like I said, with a lot of links, we're going to be sharing that too, is your version, because there was certain stuff I couldn't put on because of space and stuff like that, but definitely, um, what was your favorite uh, part of the interview that we did a year ago? What was your favorite part? Honestly, this is gonna I don't know if this sounds like stupid or not, but like I just like talking. Go ahead, man. I like I like talking with you about stuff, right? There's not a lot of people that, that know about the international channel. They don't know right. about like you know early two thousands K pop or J pop. You know, right, they're right. not, you know, like, some people don't even know who, there's some people who, like, don't know who Kenny Lauderdale is. There's, like, you are, like, right. into the same type of stuff that I was into, and I could have a relaxing conversation oh, with someone who liked, liked the same stuff that I liked. And right. I, so that was just fun for me. And I, I like to talk, so I just got to talk about stuff that I like, you know, that, so that was the most, and, and it was the first time I'd ever actually been interviewed about my channel, which was uh, an honor, and it was fun. really like, oh. it was me. Yeah, yeah, it was like, not no one else, just me. Nope, you're 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 the That's one. Crazy, and you, I mean, you broke the wall yourself. down, and then I see international channel, the, the Edward man. So. Yeah, it's like, like it's like the first time. It's great. Wow, Edward, do you have like a favorite part that? It, and it could be from both, like you know, my version and his version of the video. Like, what was I? Uh, it's both like, what was like your favorite part of the video when uh, this was going on? Uh, I think it would be like the part where you laughed really hard. I think that was like, a, <laughs> I don't know what I exactly, think, what's the segment, but you like really laughed really hard. Uh, that's the one that stuck out. <laughs> I definitely believe it was the moment where I was uh, talking about with, uh, with Noel about uh, revolution where basically HOT basically had this thing where it's like the host was basically saying, listen, you guys need to stop. Everybody got so mad. They got uh, for his first son, they got big mad. They, so they, you know, they were just so big and it's just like, how dare you? How dare you tell us that we can't, even though it's the same thing over and over, but it was the moment where that's how big they really were. And speaking of which, the Next biggest thing that's really big in uh, the Korean market right now is, uh, of course, right now, BTS. Now we can now, it gives the BTS army a whole brand new meaning because those that don't know, um, when Korean men reach a certain age of teenagers or something like that before, I believe, I my age or something like that, they got to yeah. join the military. So mm -hmm. that's why they're pretty much now going to be called BTS Army for real, and next year is going to be their next year is going to be their very tenth anniversary when they started off. And let me tell you, I'm not saying that they did more than anyone else. I'm not here to say that. I am here to say that they really did a lot in ten years, especially having their presence not only known in Korea but definitely outside and even you know where your family is from i, I definitely believe they visit the philippines from time to time maybe mm -hmm. but definitely they did a lot they did i'm i would say my very i don't know if you guys have a favorite song from them but mine is definitely uh not just dynamite but definitely say no 
And uh, Mike dropped the remix featuring the rapper, designer, and of course the DJ, Steve Aoki. That's when I basically came into the game in 2017. But I've heard about them, but that's like my favorite song is Everybody Say No and Mike Drop. Do you guys have favorite songs from BTS of a tribute for them at all? Uh, me, for myself, I, um, I haven't been keeping up with k-pop since like pretty much the international channel ended but uh one thing uh but one thing i noticed is like you know since i actually watched the mtv music awards this year yeah. uh i noticed like you know blackpink was was in there and i thought that was like really interesting like how far have that uh, k-pop has gone a long way and then it kind of sucks that right. they don't acknowledge guys like noel and me for like actually putting it well like we knew it like They're when it was like cool, cool and stuff I know, I yeah know, they, i think they should give us a little more credit right yeah <laughs> i mean definitely this is what we're here for and on that yeah. note i know before noel didn't even answer i don't know if he has a favorite song do you or you from bts know? Um, yeah. you know, I am a little, I, dude, like, it's so weird. Like for me, like 10 years ago, uh, feels like two weeks ago. So like, I don't know, man. like, uh, I don't have a favorite BTS song. I, everything I've seen of them, I think is like pretty cool. I see them on New Year's right, Rock and right. Eve. I see them at yeah. McDonald's on the drive through. Oh yeah, I meal, about which that. is phenomenal. I think that's like <laughs> awesome. Oh, my gosh. Um, I, I mean, like. Uh, as, as far as like, this is like, probably about like a 10 plus year old song more so uh, I remember I on my old Apple Mac on my old iMac computer I have Big Bang and uh, 21 doing a song called Lollipop uh, that's yeah, a quality yeah, yeah. oh baby's in here alright baby alright come here you uh, you want to say good night <laughs> Let's, let's say hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You singing? <laughs> you want to say bye? Say bye bye. Say good night. Say bye bye. Have a great night, guys. <laughs> bye. Um, okay. Oh yeah. Um. So, yeah, yeah, I like Kara a lot too. Good, that was the you know. song from, oh the, the group car i see yeah yeah I see. so, so uh, i mean that, that's kind of where i i like um there there is a k culture uh channel on pluto tv and they were showing live yeah. music performance shows and i was watching it and i really liked it um right. but i did not see enough of those episodes when they were showing them to be able to get the stuff like drilled into my head so i could like start saying artists right right I like, like, a lot of performances. yeah I, I mean, I'm definitely happy of, like, how it's been going down, too. And, you know, I really do applaud you guys for, like, finding stuff like this, especially since, like, this is, you know, when I often ask people from outside, they're, they would often be like, how do you guys know all this? And it's just, like, for my end, it's been YouTube, and especially, like I said, earlier this year, I did three Korean reports of uh, Plinko, uh, the Twin that was produced by JYP called Raha and Rahang, and definitely my very first uh, K pop artist of all time, SES. Not, not all time, but like the very first ones I've seen. And uh, is great. definitely like a shout out to Midnight Theories, the K pop Midnight Theories for them, for her doing the whole report of Baby BOX, Baby Box. Mm. They were definitely one of the very first of female. Asian artists, they got a lot of things going on, but they really ventured through it, and I applaud for them. And Poopy 678 for now. Unfortunately, I don't know if this video is going to come back probably by this release or not. But she did a video where she talked about the fan wars of Sex Kiss versus HOT, mm -hmm. and um, that was really. And she for this, you know, they have colors of who they represent. She wore both white, white is HOT, and yellow is for sex kids, for saying, I support, support both sides. And definitely, you know, um, I'm happy to have seen it really gone a long way. And speaking of things that are unfortunate of, like, coming to an end, have you guys heard about uh, the news of what's going on with uh, Cartoon Network? Nope. No. Well, what's going on? <laughs> they say they're closing it down. Saying, really? Oh, the, the, the entire I'm, Cartoon I, Network I channel? I kid you not. I kid you really? not. But, but, and it's it's sad because it's like literally been 30 years, even from the timing of October, 30 years, 
But the thing is, here's the, the thing. So they're still going to keep Toonami and Adult Swim. That's that's the big part. Okay. Is that they're not going to get rid of that. That's Are those becoming be channels? Huh? What so? What's Toonami and Adult Swim going to be? Are they going to be like channels or? They're going to be what? in the same place. They're not going to get rid of that. They're not going to get rid of that. They're just the thing is what happened is that now Cartoon Network has now became a brand new thing called Warner Brothers exclusive. So I guess they're just going to put other things. I guess when like I guess maybe when it first started, you know what I'm saying? Like now I know now I wasn't alive when you when Cartoon Network first debuted 30 years. I know you guys have. Uh, when Noel was definitely 10 years old when it happened. I'm not sure how old. Edward was, but he was older than you know me for sure. But in '92, I guess they're going to go to the old thing where they have like superhero stuff, and of course, every uh, everything is like making the rounds of uh, the new Scooby stuff. Yeah, they're not. Nobody's not feeling that. No one's feeling the new Scooby Doo series because the stuff has changed once again. Of course, but that's all that's can of worms. But that's what's going on with uh, now. Literally, Toonami and Adult Swim, it'll still stay the same, but they're changing the platform to now like Warner Brothers. So I guess what they're gonna have now is like the super, which Black Adam. That's you know that's pretty that Adult Swim and Toonami. That's the only thing they got at the moment. So now they're just gonna switch gears and be like, now we're gonna throw Scooby Doo and now the superheroes. Like literally, the very first time they had it. So Hanna Barbera stuff, and it really made me confused. And I was like, I thought this was Warner Brothers from the start, but now it was really like, yeah, we're gonna go back to Scooby Doo and basically, uh, what was it, uh, the superhero stuff? That's basically what. So now all the other, so so even from the I now for HBO Max, any of those shows, it's gone unless you have a DVD or VHS. I don't know what to say. I'm guessing Hulu and possibly. Netflix still has it, and you know earlier this year in Russia during the thing they took it, so they took it off way before we. But so that's so the other stuff of Cartoon Network is still there, but unfortunately, you know the, all the cartoon shows that was there it isn't going to be. There's not a release date, but it is happening this year, and I've heard that you have a response. What 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 would you about to say, uh, Noel? What's happening? Well, I'm just wondering, is that with this new format, are they actually going to put Toonami on at a decent time? Like, Toonami thrived right. when it was on weekday afternoons after school. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. five to seven. You know, like, once they started messing around, putting, like, stuff on in the middle of the night yeah, on Saturdays, Friday, like yeah. that. It's like, it's like, dude, I'm not. And the thing is, too, it's like, I mean, if they were showing – the stuff that, you know, International Channel is nostalgic for and myself. Right, like yeah, Wang, exactly. Tenchi Muyo, Outlaw Star, you know, that kind of stuff. I would watch that on a Saturday night. Um, and right. I got nothing against Boruto or anything like that. But of like, course, of course, of I'm course. I'm just not, like, I'm not going to seek that out at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning when I'm going to be streaming with my friends here. You know, so but <laughs> if you put... If you put it on at a better time in a better time slot, you know, like yeah. I think that would be at least something, you know, you could do. If they're gonna keep Toonami around, start you right. know, do Toonami in its old time slot where it was actually successful. You know, exactly. the other thing I would say, the other thing I would say is that I I, I feel like and I could be off on this because I didn't see a lot right, of it, but right, it seemed right. like Cartoon Network got to be very Tumblr esque. You know, like get that very, uh, like very kind of weird, uh, woke. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with being like progressive or anything, of but course, it was like of course, it was, it was like very identity politics ish kind they, of that, they lost, that vibe. They lost the legions with the fans. They they that vibe. That was the thing I noticed about the time I noticed this. I'm I'm guessing I would notice this. I guess because I was younger. I'm younger at this rate. Is I noticed this has happened. I believe maybe by two, like after their 20th anniversary. So probably around 2014 or 2015. And it was just like, Hey, this ain't, this ain't the same anymore. Like I, I, that was pretty much the rate where now I do have friends of mine that was still watching it through, but I was pretty much like, I'm gonna check here every now and then. But I, that was the moment when I'm like, hold up after the 20th anniversary, y'all guys are slacking. What's going on? 
to me the the heyday the the last high point of the Cartoon Network, and this is just my opinion. I like I got the you. regular show. I thought regular show did a good job of representing people like me. You know, just kind of yeah. like nerdy really guys. You know, yeah. they were still guys, but they definitely were kind of quirky. And they, within the format of like a children's show, were wow. able to really get the vibe yeah. of. Yeah. You know, like a 20 something year old guy who's got some nerdy side, got some cool side, got some social side, got some insane side, you know, and like, but, you know, I don't know. The other thing, too, is I think the art just, and this goes to that Tumblr comment, became so simplistic. Like, you know, like the Cartoon Network, you know, they definitely had hyper stylized uh, stuff like, you know, Dexter's Laboratory and stuff like that, which is fine. But the stuff just stopped looking. I don't, it didn't have a. It didn't have a kind of a, a warmth to it, or kind of a craftsmanship to it. And uh, so I, I don't know. I think, yeah, yeah I, it just kind of, it just kind of grew away from me a little bit. So it might be one of the reasons why I, it's going our way. I guess. Yeah. How about you, uh, uh, Edward from International? How 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 are you taking the news, my guy? And, uh, do you have yeah. a favorite show on that note? Yeah, I'm not sure what I say was my favorite show on Toonami or Cartoon Networks, but we were actually talking. We just actually also heard of the news of like uh, G4 closing out, right? And so like it's kind of like it not, reopened. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They and it's not, reopened not, um, about a year, and then it just closed. Uh, one, it's funny. One of the things I think they're still here now was was Fuse. I remember Fuse was down for a bit, and speaking of stuff shutting down. I remember there was a moment when uh, Tsunami first closed down, and I know, uh, it was, oh, yeah. like I said, rest in peace to the OG Tom. Is, oh, uh, yeah, the I thing was, that. I was just catching into it, and the thing is, I thought it was going to be gone forever. But then yeah. about four years later, ironically right now, ten years ago, it came back, and I was like, wow, that wasn't as long as I thought it was going to be. I thought, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to be gone that, that The bands did that. You know, that like the one time the internet all agreed on something was when they did that <laughs> April Fool's thing and they actually yeah. ran the good tsunami. Yeah. And everyone just yeah. got this yeah. wave of happiness. And that, yeah. that was a real groundswell movement to get tsunami back. This was like my very first time. I've talked about them a year ago. Uh, my favorite uh, group here, uh, funny from where uh, Edward's at in California. Uh, how the creator our future? That's actually uh, their show ten years ago that got me into them, and also just you know filling their stuff because they were like, you know, just a group of guys just talk about anything and you know be outlandish and free and all that stuff. Like that was my vibe, and I'm like, this what kind of got me into listening to music because at the time before 2012, you know, I was on this level of like listening to only like just Asian music, but it was old school, but I was really trying to get into the new school. It was literally these guys that brought me back to this, and then, you know, as of everything right now, it's like, not much is going on again, but uh, yeah, I know, I know the news, like, Cartoon Network is, like, officially, like, closing for 30 years. I was like, man, that's not really a long time. Well, you know, the other thing, the other thing, I think it's, it's two things, right? I think that yeah. Um, the art school people who kind of uh, ended up making cartoons now, um, yeah. they make the cartoons less relatable, less aesthetically pleasing, less oh, accessible, uh, right? Then to go uh, with, um, you know, I see's point over here, um, you know, G4, right? That's a whole other conversation that's fascinating. And I've done yeah. some, you know, weblogs about it as well, is that. You know, the reason that Cartoon Network was successful, you know, right. was, you know, two things. They had their, well, a few things, right? They had their right. reruns of Hanna-Barbera stuff, and they showed, yeah. some, you know, vintage cartoons. They had their original like cartoons, like Johnny stuff. Bravo, That's Powerpuff fine. Girls, yeah, Ed, 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 Eddie, those original ones that were funny, warped, but, you know, yeah. cute, right? And yeah. then they had the anime. Right, that was yes. the experience oh. of Cartoon Network, yes. right? And as they drifted away from that and it became a different yeah. product, they lost what was good about it. 
And with G4, right. you know, what, to the fans, man. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, Edward and I, you know, when we did our, our interview, right? Like, you know, he remembered G4 when it was Tech TV. Like, that was when he was, like, yeah, more into I, it. Even yeah, before the I Tech TV merger. And I remember G4 when it was kind of like in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the, like, like when it was like Tech TV to G4 kind of thing. And I remember yeah. G4 more when it was like the, uh, you know, Olivia Munn, Code Monkeys times. But regardless right. of whatever your version of G4 that you watched a lot of, this new version uh, was not it. it you know, that was doing... the problem is that yeah. there, there was uh -oh. a desire for those times. And, right. you know, they, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know if they thought it was, you know, not woke enough or too problematic or, or whatever, but they didn't want right. to have pretty girls. Right. Um, eventually they did, but it was kind of too little too late and they uh, didn't have, um, that'd be mean. I was like, you know, but it, the, the, the hosts were not, the male hosts were not like that likable or accessible, you know, like yeah. freaking Adam Sessler, you know, he's been going on unhinged rants on Twitter for like whatever happened to him. It's not normal, you know, like he. He's, he's been getting into fights with people telling, like, mom jokes for, like, 72 hours. You know, like, what are you doing? Like, how am I, like, I, why would I identify? You're ruining your career. I'm going to ruin like, this man's whole career. <laughs> <laughs> your mom, your mom said so. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what are you, 50? Are you 50? Uh, like, like, this <laughs> like, you know, so, you I, think? yeah, I don't know, man. And then, well, but the other thing to, you know, I see his point yeah, here, because. Your we, mama. Your mama, yeah. Because <laughs> you know, we joke a lot about Frost, <laughs> about Frost and things like that. Like, it, like her in like measured doses selectively, like would right. have been fine. But like giving her a platform to like rant and rave and attack the viewers was like not helpful. And it, it, it wasn't um, like the thing that G four was. It's just like, wait, what's going on now? One thing yeah. I also remember from it. My family would actually watch uh, now. Uh, it was originally called Sasuke uh, Ninja Warrior, and yes, one thing yes, that was yes, interesting. Yes, yes. One thing my that was last... interesting. Oh, go ahead. Okay, so one the thing that was interesting is uh, when I did my TNT Bombard report, they were on it. I was like, oh my god, they were one of the uh, members from TNT, aka uh, Tall Moon and Cisco Moon, because they're from Cali. Well. The group was based when they were doing the auditions and stuff, California. So one of the members they were on uh, Ninja Warriors, the OG before American. So yeah, yeah, Sasuke. Yeah, Sasuke. Yes, yeah, yeah, they were on it. Well, one of the members. Yeah. What were you about to say, my guy? My um, my um, my last uh, weblog on the death of G four. It's called like Death of G four two point with no oh. comics or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. I had Sasuke on in the background because uh, I, I did three videos on G4 when it came back, okay? The first right, one was about right. the Frost Grant. The second one was about what I think they should do and that I'm happy that, right, like, right. I've seen some signs that they're doing it. And then the third right. one was they're dead, right? So on that one that they're dead, like, it was the Monday after the news came out that they were done. And right, it, right. The, it was kind of like in zombie mode. It was still on Pluto TV, he just said, right. like, sign off. And all they were doing, they were showing old Ninja Warrior on a loop. And I was thinking to myself, yeah. like, if you just did this, like, if you just from showed the old, old stuff. From the get-go. Show, show the old stuff and then pepper in the new stuff at prime time, yes. you know? Yes. 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 And the other thing, too, was, like, like the new shows that they had... You know, right. like, I, dude, I would, I would watch a show that Pokimane was a host on or something. Or I would, yeah, I, I yeah, would, like, of course. Do it, like, get these, get these. I don't know how much they're charging or whatever, but like, it, you know, like the the times when I would see the more popular Twitch people on there, like the pretty girls and stuff, they would be on yeah. these like weird game shows or something like that. You know, like that they would put on that would like be like, I, like there was like no end in sight to them. So it was this weird kind of streaming culture with with streamers that weren't yeah. weren't that great at streaming or the games they were streaming weren't that good it was just like it was weird man like it so yeah. i mean i i would if i if it were up to me i would lean heavily on the on the on the hits on the, on the good stuff and of then course. um i lean heavily on the good stuff and then when it's time for like new episodes, like eight o'clock rolls around or something like that, that's when you do a new X play episode, a new attack of the show episode, 
get some video game review shows, make them a half an hour to an hour long. And if you are going to stream something, stream a variety of stuff from a variety of genres, not just like battle royale stuff, you know, with, you know, random right, people. Right, you know. Right. Yeah, I feel you. So everybody, thank you all for your questions. And I really had a good time, not only with the first anniversary of Noah once again, but definitely with our very first guest and face reveal of International Channel for Life. And I'm, I kind of really thank you, Noel. I kind of thank you, Edo. I didn't really know. I don't, I don't put myself over that much, but the way you, you put right. me over it, then of course, Diego's not here, but the way Diego was so enthusiastic about <laughs> us Diego's doing this, good. I'm like, I feel like so, Woo. I feel like so kind of bad that I'm like, I'm not like doing his expectations, but I'm, I'm trying my best. So, uh, you know, shout out to Diego because he's like, he was like a, a real fan. And also like the other people who um, come around here uh, on Noel's live stream, I thank them for as well the support and all that other stuff. So yeah, oh, thank okay. you a lot. And, work. Oh, and I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Goodbye. See ya. Bye. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. And along with my previous video coming up of basically my YouTube part four video of internet shutting down once again. There is another video that's going to be coming during the Halloween season or maybe during late in the November season of the Taiwanese and Japanese group of Black Biscuits. Thank you guys for sending in your questions. Thank you guys for so much of the support of the first anniversary of the podcast. And of course, you know, another one's going to come up next. And as usual, you know, to you all, see you later. But wait, wait, wait. There was one important thing we have forgot to mention. The shout-outs for this episode. So the shout-outs we have is not only just for the International Channel and Noah's Comics, but also to Okadawa. And also, 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 Renai Hopkins. Renai Hopkins. So now... As usual, you all, I'll see you all next time. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye!